Off. Welcome to the ACC on ESPN. Today, the Virginia Cavaliers get set to take on the Louisville Cardinals from Papa John's Cardinal Stadium. Virginia, 6-3, bowl eligible for the first time since 2011. Louisville at 5-4 has lost three of their last four, but a win today, and they'll be bowl eligible for the eighth consecutive season. Hi, everyone. Great to have you with us. Mike Corey, Reedy, and Golia. Welcome to the Ville, where it has not been the season that Cardinals fans have expected. Once a top 15 team, and now the attention is certainly down, especially on the reigning Heisman Trophy winner, quarterback Lamar Jackson, who's actually having a better season this year, Reedy, with all the improvements that he's made. He is, and it's a surprise he's not getting more Heisman love. And the reason he's doing better this year is because of this right here. Improved accuracy is the first thing, Mike. Watch him split the defenders with his pass, gets it out quick, spins it, and he's doing a nice job of that this year, letting his receivers catch it, run after the catch. And then, improved decision making. Watch him scan the field left to right, poise in the pocket, and he's gonna throw an absolutely beautiful ball down the right side and drop it in the bucket for his receiver. Excellent job by Lamar Jackson. Of course, elite speed. He had it last year. He has it again this year. Watch him split these defenders with his feet. But what he has improved on this year is his size. He's about 10 pounds heavier with muscle. You're going to see him break a tackle here at the end. And Lamar Jackson is an improved player, believe it or not, from his Heisman Trophy winning season. Better numbers passing overall, 426 yards per game combined at his first in the nation. How about defensively? Are the Cavaliers up to the task? They've got great leadership from this guy, Micah Kaiser. If they're going to slow down Lamar Jackson, Micah Kaiser, who's approaching 100 tackles on the season, has to have a big game. You see what he did last year against them. 14 tackles, two sacks. He needs another game like that today, does Micah Kaiser. Virginia won the toss, and they have deferred. Louisville will start with the football here in this game today. And how crazy things have been in the ACC this season, right? Well, I mean, for instance, Virginia, right? No one picked them. Look where they are. Travion Samuel on the return for Louisville and gets across the 20-yard line. So that's where Louisville will set up camp with Lamar Jackson and our record watch here today. I mean, it's unbelievable what he has done. And you look at those stats. I mean, he's approaching every record. I mean, and because, Mike, he is such a dangerous athlete, Dual, true dual threat, throwing a passing, but boy, he can do it all. 379 yards today to become Louisville's all-time leader. And as I just said, he averages 426 a game. Yeah, uh, big task today for this Virginia defense to contain Lamar Jackson. First down and a keeper, and Jackson is tripped up in the backfield. Nice play by Juan Thornhill after a short gain of three yards. Yeah, and that's what you need to do. You need to get off your blocks. You need to be aware of where Lamar Jackson is. And you got to tackle. That was a problem. You know, you got to get off the blocks and you got to make those tackles. Five wide as the Cardinals spread them out. Jackson over the middle. It's dropped by Jalen Smith. And he was covered by Micah Kaiser. Yeah, good job by Micah Kaiser. From that middle linebacker position, he will run into pass coverage. He's the quintessential middle linebacker. He's a very good athlete that can turn back in pass pro. This Virginia team is coming off that 40 to 36 home win over Georgia Tech and a comeback victory. I'm trying to keep things rolling here today. Third down and seven. Jackson's pass deflected and incomplete and they force a three and out to start here today on the road. Exactly what Bronco Mendenhall wants from his defensive unit. And again, Bronco Mendenhall, the head coach, but he calls the defenses too. That's his baby, and he's happy with a three and out by that unit. Chris Peace, the linebacker, one of the top players and the leader in sacks and on the breakup that time for the Virginia defense that'll get this back on the punt. Daniel Ham awaits the kick from Mason King. Ham, and there's interference there with Louisville as a flag comes flying in. Tremaine Washington got right in his face. 
and didn't give him the opportunity to catch that yeah, ball. Yeah, you're right, Mike. That's kick catch interference. It doesn't matter if he fair catches or not. You've got to give him the opportunity to catch the ball. Kick catch interference, number 15, kicking team, 15 yard penalty. First down. First down. Stuart Mullins, our referee today, and yeah, that's an easy one. Cavaliers football and Kurt Ben Kurt, the senior from Cape Coral, Florida, gets his first action here today. Final season of his career, and boy, it's been quite the story for him, hasn't it? Uh, he's been to a few different places. A big quarterback, you see his size, 6'4", 215, really understands the offense well in his second year with Bronco Mendenhall. He's playing excellent this season. Ben Kirk got married last July. His wife, Samantha, down at Lover's Key State Park in Fort Myers, Florida. Just 22 years old, and a first down and 10 for Virginia now up at the 46 after the penalty. The gift to Jordan Ellis, and he stopped for a loss of one. How about impact players here today, Rainey, as the Cavaliers have it on offense? Yeah, as we take a look at it, the receiver for Virginia, Olamide Zacchaeus, he's everywhere in the backfield. He'll run it, pass it, receive it, good job. And then Chucky Williams, his 36th straight start, for the fifth year senior safety for Louisville, a leader in that secondary. Play action fake by Benker. And on the far side catch by Andre Lavroni. First down for Virginia. In front of Trumaine Washington, that's a gain of 17. And a good throw uh, by Benker. They're showing his arm strength in rhythm to get it to the receiver. Benker wanted to go to USF to start his career, didn't Yeah, he? was recruited, wanted to go to USF. USF wouldn't give him that commitment when they came back a week later and said, we want you. He said, too late, and committed to ECU. Guess it works both ways in the recruiting world. Ben Kerr, look out from behind. He's taken down and sacked. And that's James Hearns, the senior defensive end, with his fourth sack of the season. Yeah, that backside pressure from Hearns. Good effort, not given up as he beats the left tackle. Just a speed rush to the outside and gets the sack. That was 67, Jack English, the left tackle that got beat on that play. That's a loss of 10 on the play. And really takes Virginia out of their rhythm here on their opening drive of this game today. Second and 20. And a timeout. Timeout, Virginia, their first. We'll be back. Louisville goes three and out on their first possession. Virginia driving here early in the first. Brady, you and I are on this every week. Every Saturday, we watch College Game Day on the app. Every ESPN ABC college football game is live after this game. Probably watch something on yeah. the way to the airport. Absolutely. I was going to say, with all the traveling we do, oh boy, you need it in airports. We use it a lot. Download the ESPN app today. If you don't have it, stream every college football game live. Scores, news, highlights, and much more. Virginia football, second down and 20 after a sack as Benkert gets it out and finds Donnie Dowling. And Dowling... Gets back almost to the original line of scrimmage, a gain of 10. Yeah, you know, give him the underneath stuff on second and 20. Just come up and make the tackle. And, you know, talking to defensive coordinator Peter Sermon, he was saying guys need to step up and make plays. The defensive scheme's not going to bail them out. Guys have to play football. And it uh, looks like they came out today, Mike, ready to play defensively. Third down and 10, Virginia from the 38 of the Cardinals. Lost it up, and he's got it. Lavroni again on the catch through two Louisville defenders. Chucky Williams was back there, but it's a big gainer for the Cavaliers setting up their next play inside the red zone. Uh, it's press coverage, and it's one-on-one. -on -one. Ben Kurt sees it, and he goes there. And it's a perfect pass. The safety cannot get over Chucky Williams quick enough, and Tremaine Washington in the corner and press coverage just gets beat. 
The receiver, Lavroni, beats him with speed and a good throw by Benker. Lavroni is that big play guy. 30 yards on that catch. He averages over 22 a catch, which is good for sixth in the country. First and goal, Cavaliers. It's Ellis for just one. Jordan Ellis continues to carry the load for this team. They do have three true freshman yeah. running backs that they try to work into the mix a little well, bit. And he's the workhorse. And talking to the coaches uh, of Virginia, they said, listen, he is our one back that's playing at an ACC level. A lot of younger guys that need to get experience and are learning, but that's the guy, Jordan Ellis, that they lean on. Daniel Hamm is his backup along with Chris Sharp, and they are both in there right now as Ellis takes a seat. Second and goal. Through the legs of Sharp, he's got it. Sharp dives, touchdown Virginia. I love it. It's a little bit of a Statue of Liberty play, right? <laughs> Benker rolls out, puts it underneath. Chris Sharp grabs it, and then great explosion on the run and the effort to get it in the end zone. Great job by Chris Sharp. What a play. Did you ever take a handoff like that? I, I have not. Let's take a look at this. Right under the legs, a little, uh, that's a little schoolyard football. Put it under, a reverse snap in the backfield, if you will. Great hands by Sharp to get it. Good job by Banker, and then the run after. That's a beautiful play. What a nifty play by Virginia on just the ninth carry of the season for Chris Sharp and his first touchdown. Flag on the play. It's pretty much the, the new age Statue of Liberty, that play, Mike. That was pretty cool. Seven plays, 54 yards on that drive. The third time this season, only the third Illegal time this season. 12 players in the defensive formation. Players decline. We'll play the try. Only the third time this season, Virginia has scored on their opening yeah. drive. And right, of course, when we talked up the Louisville defense and defensive coordinator Peter Sermon, that one-on-one -on -one press coverage outside, and Virginia hits him for a big play. A.J. Mejia for the extra point. 7-0 Cavaliers. What a job by Virginia. Opening drive down the field for a touchdown. A little trickery. It's capped off by Chris Sharp. And the visitors lead early. The All-State Saturday kickoff is presented by All-State, official protector of college football fans. And in part by Axe. Find your magic. It was cool to go inside the locker room there for Louisville and Lamar Jackson. So many sayings and words of encouragement up throughout the entire complex here in oh, Louisville. Yeah, and you love the Veterans Day uniform, the, the stars and stripes there. Beautiful. It was an opening drive touchdown by Virginia, and they lead it 7 0. Second offensive possession coming up here for the Cardinals. Let's go back inside the Lamar Jackson locker room and show you what he has in his locker, something that he sees every day. Yeah, a lot of sayings are around the Louisville locker room, and you love it because you're reading it every day. You know, you're reminding yourself, and you just you love it when players take it upon themselves to do the little extra and really remind themselves. And I think all the young athletes out there, regardless of sport, you know, can take something from that. And when your best player is one of your hardest yeah. workers and wants to improve, like you talked about earlier. That's true leadership. When your best player is out there busting his tail, and Lamar Jackson does that. Here's Malik Williams on the carry for the first time today. Gets across the 30-yard line. It's a guy that's been dealing with an elbow injury. Picks up six yards on his first touch. Yeah, Bobby Petrino told us, though, he's been practicing really well, and they were excited to have him back fully, fully healthy. All the running backs, they said, really are healthy uh, for the first time this season. And, and uh, Malik Williams, they said, is going to be a big part of uh, running the ball today. There he is again, tripped up from behind this time, though, by Quinn Blanding. And that's the other part of the 1-2 combination. You talked about Micah Kaiser in the open. Quinn Blanding, his best friend there on that tackle. You know, Blanding was one of the highest recruited players in the state of Virginia. Could have went anywhere. Decided to stay home and play for Virginia. Wanted to build something. You know, didn't really turn out the way he wanted early on in his career. But, boy, his senior year, they're playing great. Already bowl eligible, of course. 
Third down, keeper by Jackson. We've seen this before. Lamar Jackson is going to take it to the house. Touchdown. And that's the problem. I mean, he's just too dynamic. You got to try to make him one dimensional. Take the runaway. Make him beat you with his arm. That's just a zone read, Mike, that Lamar Jackson runs to perfection. I want you to watch this. He puts it in the belly of Malik Williams. The D line steps down just a second. A good block on the perimeter. And Jackson hits it with that elite speed we talked about in the open. No safety in the middle of the field. See you later, Lamar Jackson. 15th rushing touchdown of the season. 33 total between rushing and passing. He's amazing. What happened defensively there, Rainey? Everybody's kind of sucked up to the line of scrimmage. Yeah, just a zone read, like I said, and you see that you have to be disciplined when a quarterback runs zone read. He puts it in, you see the flow to the left. You saw the linebacker, Jordan Mack, 37, flow to his left. Boy, Jackson reads that, pulls it out, and hits the hole. You gotta have eye discipline defensively for Virginia against a zone read quarterback. They didn't have it right there. And that's how fast things can change with this Louisville offense. Three plays, 75 yards in a minute and four seconds, and we're tied at seven. Joe Reed back to return the kick along with Daniel Ham for Virginia. Joe Reed had a kickoff return for a touchdown last week. He's the ACC specialist of the week, and he's going to have a chance at the return here. Gets bumped early and gets across the 25-yard line. So now the Cavaliers tied at seven, but a pretty good drive by them offensively in their first try. Great drive by them and, and a good answer by Louisville. That's what you need to do. We'll see what Virginia has in store here now in this possession. And for Louisville defensively, the problem they had a couple weeks ago uh, in their game against Wake Forest, Mike, was leverage on defense and getting off of blocks. And they have to do that, especially in the secondary with their defensive backs. We'll be watching that one tonight, of course, Notre Dame, Miami at 8 o'clock Eastern. Who you got, buddy? I think Miami. You do? I'm going to call wow. it Miami. Yeah, okay. Hype around them today. Sure College is. game day there. First time in quite some time. Olamide Zacchaeus on the carry as Virginia is faced with a second down and long. Bronco Mendenhall in his second season as coach coming from BYU. We asked him yesterday if there were other opportunities. He said there was a couple. One that he chose not to do, and he said his wife, Holly, didn't want to talk to him for about three weeks. I was so very impressed. It's the first time I ever met Bronco Mendenhall. The, the, you know, the, uh, the one thing I can say about him, uh, the biggest compliment I can give him, if I had a son, I would want my son to play for him. That, that's how impressed I was with him. Second half, Ben Kurt in trouble. Escapes from maybe a yard, and it'll be third down and long. On the other side, Bobby Petrino, second stint at Louisville. And a win here today, and they are bowl eligible for the eighth straight year. Nine and four last year, seven and one of the ACC. Not the season they wanted to have this time, but still have a lot of things to play for in front of them. Well, listen, he's, he's an offensive mastermind. That's his, you know, his skill set and the offense has been doing well this year. It's right now defense is what needs to step up and they need to get off the field on third down. Pressure in Bedkirk's face and he gets away. Third down directing traffic and runs out of real estate. He'll be chased out by Trayvon Young and it's fourth down for the Cavaliers and they'll punt. Wow, great effort by Young to track down Bedkirk. I was watching downfield. He had defenders in coverage and they had to stay on and you see the speed by the defensive lineman Trayvon Young great wheels there to prevent Ben Kurt from getting up that sideline and converting on that third down run Lester Coleman just gets that put off as Reggie Bonifon lets it bounce out of bounds and will step aside halfway through the first quarter from Louisville Kentucky tied at seven Seven percent. 
Play fake by Lamar Jackson on first down. Taking a shot deep. Coverage is there by Blandy, but a flag is thrown. And the pass intended for Jalen Smith. And Jalen Smith, the leading receiver, he's one of those guys. Pass interference, number three, defense. 15-yard penalty, first down. That the offense is looking to to step up and make plays. He gets by the safety, Blanding. You see Blanding try to turn back and look at the ball, but he contacted the receiver, Jalen Smith, before the ball got there. It's an easy call. Too much contact there. Normally Absolutely. you're talking about not looking back at the ball. He did, as you said at the end, just yeah. too much contact. Absolutely. First down now for Louisville at the 36. Jackson again on the keeper. Same type of play, he scored with a touchdown. This time he's run out at the Virginia 45. It's a gain of 19 yards. Yeah, and it's in zone read once again, but this time Lamar Jackson sees it develop right up the middle. Look at that. Great job by the offensive line there as well. Blocking for him. Cole Bentley, 66, is a true freshman. The kid was playing in high school last year. Great job there and great vision by Lamar Jackson. Jackson, he chased, and there's that escapability. And also his improvement yeah. there, throwing that one away. There is the smarts, you know. A lot of time running quarterbacks, they just don't want to throw the ball away. That time you're outside of the tackle box, live for another down, let that thing go. Exactly what Lamar Jackson did right there. Coach said during the springtime they wouldn't let Jackson run. They wanted him to focus on things yeah, like well, this in the pocket that's and throw the ball away. That has helped improve his pocket poise and his patience. The fact that in spring football, if he ran with it, they blew the whistle, the play was dead. It was a lot of work, Bobby Petrino said, but boy, it's paid off. They swing it out to Dez Fitzpatrick. And not much there on that second down catch, and he is a real up-and-comer redshirt freshman from Farmington Hills, Michigan, yeah. tied for the lead. Well, and that's, that's on his teammate, number five, Seth Dawkins. When you run those quick passes sideline to sideline, you got to block for your teammate. Dawkins didn't step up and block. Good job by Virginia to beat the block and make the tackle. Third down and long. Opponents converting just 24% of the time on Virginia defense on third downs this year. Jackson, yep, and that number will be better after that. It's going to be fourth down as he slips. And that's a great job by the Virginia defense. That's setting the edge. Offside. Offside. Defense. Five-yard penalty. Third down. Boy, and that's killer wow. there. You saw Andrew Brown, number nine, look up. Most likely was the culprit. They did a nice job of containing Lamar, keep him in the pocket. And you see a couple guys running some stunts up front, little blitz action, just got into the neutral zone, which caused the flag, and that's a killer. You do not want to give Lamar Jackson do-overs. Malik Williams is in the backfield. That stat for Virginia was with opponents on third and long. Now it's a third and short here with third and four. Here comes the pressure. Williams, that's Jackson who kept it here, and he is down. So, looks like had he yeah, been able well, to hand it off, Williams is off to the well, right. His eyes got big. What he was going to do, he was going to pull it from the belly of Malik Williams and follow Malik as a lead blocker, but his feet just slip out from under him. It's a good read. He had two blockers in front of him. He had the running back in front of him. He had a big offensive lineman, 79, Kenny Thomas. That thing had the, the ability to go out the back end. It's just Lamar Jackson slipped. So the drive stalls at the Virginia 41-yard line, and Mason King punts again to Daniel Ham. Gets a Louisville bounce, and Virginia is going to start at their own two-yard line when we come back. 4.52 to play in the first in this ACC matchup here in Louisville, Kentucky. Cavaliers at Cardinals tied at seven. Back in Louisville, Kentucky, Virginia and Louisville tied at seven here in this first quarter. Mike Corey alongside former UMass All-American and NFL running back Rainey Angolia. Good to be with you here today for this hey. ACC matchup. Great day for football. A little chilly for my Florida bones, but hey, bit. this is football weather. 
Not as bad as yesterday. We were out walking the streets. It's like 33 degrees yeah. out, you know, which I really shouldn't say that because I grew up in the Northeast, so people are going to think I'm a wimp, <laughs> which I am now. Exactly. Yeah, you're used to cold weather. Not for a long time, but I grew up in Vermont. Here's Ellis on the carry for Virginia. Stretches it up to the 10-yard line. Solid run of seven yards as they start deep in their own territory on this drive. Yeah, exactly what you want to do when your back's to your own goal line. Give it to your big back. Power through. Give yourself some breathing room. First down. I talk about it each week, Mike. It's, it's an underrated down. If you can get positive yards, six, seven yards, boy, that's how you stay ahead of the chains. It opens up the playbook for the offensive coordinator, second and short. Play fake. Oh, ben Kirk doesn't see the pressure, and he's taken down at the one-yard line. John Grenard was in there, the defensive end for the Cardinals. Yeah, I was going to go with a little waggle. Ben Kurt never sees Grenard. I mean, the tackle passes him off to the back. You see the blitz there. You always want to block inside out. When in doubt, inside out. That inside guy can hurt you more than the outside. They don't pick him up. Grenard gets in there. He's the leader of this Louisville team in sacks. Well, guess what? He's got another one. 12 and a half now for Grenard on the season. Backed up now at their own one and a half yard line, Virginia. Ben Kurt has to just throw it away and pressure in there by Trayvon Young. Wow, that's risky, right? If you're Ben Kurt, you're running the back of that end zone, your foot hits out. That's a safety. He's able to get out of the pocket and throw it away, but Louisville defense up to the task. Going to force a punt from the back of the end zone here for Virginia. Remember, out of the pocket, ball has to get back to the line of scrimmage. Correct. And he got it past that on the throw out of bounds. So look out here, Lester Coleman from the back of the zone end zone. And you get two guys back for Louisville on the Virginia side of the field. And it's going to be Bonifon backtracking. At his own 48, good return room here. Reggie Bonifon knocked out at the Virginia 23-yard line. What a return here, and what a job by Louisville to set up amazing yeah. field position. Well, Reggie Bonifon may be the most versatile player for Louisville. Can do it everything. Came here as a quarterback. He's a Louisville kid. Played at Trinity High School here. I called one of his games in high school. Highly recruited. And he's the type of kid that can play multiple positions. They've moved him to the running back role this year. Doing a nice job. And, of course, right there in special teams with a punt return. Setting up the offense in great field position. It was a 52-yard punt, but they got 28 on the return by Bonifon, who got marked down at the 25-yard line. Williams fumbles the football. Malik Williams fumbles in Virginia's Micah Kaiser recovers. And this is just a mesh problem. This happens on zone read because Lamar Jackson likes to pull it out a lot. Malik Williams knows that. He thinks he's going to pull it out. Lamar Jackson's actually giving it to him, and there's a mesh problem. And, and when a running back, he's been out with an elbow injury. So that timing can be off. The rhythm between the handoff with the quarterback and the running back, it was there. Williams thought Jackson was pulling it. He didn't, and it's on the ground, and Virginia jumps on it. Micah Kaiser in the right spot there for his second fumble recovery of the season. I guess that's how you move the football yeah, out of your well, own territory. You talk about over. Wasting great field position. Boy. Ben Kerr. Nice catch here by Donnie Dowling. And just like that, they are up close to midfield. So they have to punt from their own one and a half yard line. Louisville gets a return all the way to the 25, but a turnover, and now all of a sudden, it's Virginia that's moved. Yeah, and I like the way Kirk Benkert leads this offense. Good job there. Looking to the right, comes to the left, shows you his arm strength. We met with him yesterday, too, an impressive young man, already married, 22 years old, a lot more mature than you would think a 22-year-old is. He's doing a nice job leading this offense. Now it's Ellis on the carry for about three yards. Ben Kurt was at Eastern Carolina, as we mentioned, but he tore his ACL before his sophomore year. It was a team that went 5-7 and seven that year. Then Ruffin McNeil, who you know everybody loved, got fired yeah. from ECU, and things changed. Yeah, and don't forget, Lincoln Riley was the offensive coordinator, now head coach at Oklahoma. Ben Kurt decided to transfer and come to Brock and Mendel. Still had two years of eligibility left, 
and wanted to get here for the start of uh, Mendenhall's tenure with Virginia. And now a senior has already led the team to a bowl. See if they can do a little more here. Ben Kurt swings it out, and it's Ellis on the catch. Some blockers there, but Louisville smells it out, and they bring him down for no game. Dorian Etheridge and Jair Alexander combined for the tackle to set up third down and long. And we talked about Louisville getting off blocks, having leverage, coming up making tackles. And I know defensive coordinator Peter Sermon preached that to them this week. And so far, they're doing a nice job. Another thing Peter Sermon did was he told us he showed highlights to his seniors of great plays they made last year to kind of hype them up. Trying to get him jump started a little bit. Saying, you can do it. Do it again. Said, I need the best version of you yep. here in this game and for the rest of this season. Third down, Virginia. Ben Kirk in trouble again. And he finds the football. It got stripped out. James Hearns stripped it, and Trayvon Young recovers it for the Cardinals. I mean, what a strip sack from James Hearns. And I can tell you, looking from the booth, Mike, number 99, Hearns looked like he was lined up off sides. I got a little bit of an angle, but boy, great jump. No flag comes up, and you see the speed from that left defensive end spot. Is he just a little spin inside, then with the speed? And watch this strip sack right here. Boy, great job by James Hearns right there. Brandon Pertile, the right tackle, just got beat as Hearns with a little spin move and the speed to Benkert for this strip sack. And now Louisville with first and 10 from the 40. And the pass is caught by Jalen Smith. Picks up eight yards on first down. And yeah, Peter Sermon has to like that with his defense getting charged up and making plays like that. Yeah, there's no doubt they're playing uh, much more aggressively and uh, and doing their assignments. Like like he told us, they need to step up. And guys, we've called a bunch of different names today already for this Louisville defense. Setting up a short field for the offense. Williams, clean handoff this time, undercut by Brenton Nelson for no gain. And Nelson, great story. Former walk-on, earned a scholarship. He's leading the team in interceptions. Comes up and makes that tackle there. Coach had brought him into August and after camp, brought him up on stage and gave him a scholarship. I'll tell you that in a moment as Jackson goes deep here. Third down, it's broken up. Incomplete. One Thornhill was down there on Jalen Smith. Oh, this is excellent coverage by Thornhill. Just a little bump there, perfect. Little bump again, then look back. Stride for a second, see how he goes up? Excellent job by Thornhill there. That's how you cover man to man. It is fourth down for the Cardinals. Day Williams checks in in the backfield. They're gonna go for it That's here. tweener land, you know yep. when I say that. Line. You're not gonna go for a 50 yard field goal, especially when you have Lamar Jackson back there. Jackson, keeper, look out. And Lamar Jackson for the first down for Louisville to the 20. Bryce Hall makes the tackle. But not before he picks up 13 yards. Uh, again, quarter. just zone read. Great job by Jackson. Again, a little blocking, a little better blocking out in space by his receiver. And I think Lamar Jackson takes that to the house once again. We'll have first down and 10 from the Virginia 20-yard line when we come back. Lamar Jackson and the Louisville Cardinals here at home today versus an upstart Virginia team. One quarter of the book, second quarter when we return. Tied at seven, start of the second quarter from Louisville, Kentucky, as we take a look at the college football playoff top 25 rankings brought to you by Goodyear. Yeah, got some good, what a great weekend. Oh, it's awesome. Football, of course, headlined by Notre Dame and Miami tonight. Flags down on this opening play of the second. 11, offense, five-yard penalty, first down. Georgia Auburn's pretty good, too, by the way. That's exactly right. <laughs> yeah, there's just so many games. That's why you need the app. Yeah. You'll be able to watch Just multiple games. 15 minutes. T Thank you. TCU, Oklahoma, I mean, just look at that. Unbelievable. Good Washington, job. Washington, I'm surprised by that team. A very talented team in the yeah. last night that lost. Stanford's yeah, the, good. But. The Pac-12's pretty much beating themselves up this yeah. year. It's been uh, it's been crazy. And look at Iowa beating Wisconsin early. Handoff here for Reggie Bonifon. 
Let's go back to the studio here now. Second down and 13 now for the Cardinals, just underway in the second quarter. Jackson over the middle, pass knocked down. There was contact though beforehand. Chris Moore in back of Seth Dawkins that time. Pass interference, number 39, defense, spot foul, automatic, first down. Yeah, Chris Moore thought he made a good play. Unfortunately, the uh, side judge on the other side thought different, thought he got there a little early as we take another look at it. Boy, you know, and the, the right hand was perfect. Watch from here. He's going to have the left hand on him. Just a, he, a little bit, you know, I think that's a tough call. I mean, but it goes against him. First down, bottom five. Good solid run by him down to the seven. That's a gain of seven. Micah Kaiser on the tackle. And they told us Reggie Bonifant, again, his first true season as a full-time running back. They really like the way he's hitting the hole. He's doing a nice job, and you see it right there. No wasted movement. Lower those pads, run behind him, and go. One of those triple threat backs, rushing, receiving. He's got good hands. Well, and he'll throw it, too. Yes, he's watch exactly. Him. Oh, and Bonifant this time tracked down from behind by Kaiser. How good is he? At the one and only Micah Kaiser. I mean, with the central middle linebacker, he's right in the middle of the field. Watch him come inside. No hat on him at all. That's exactly what you do want to be. A heat seeking missile from middle linebacker inside out as Kaiser gets there for the tackle for the loss. One more tackle, and he has 100 for the season. He's sixth in the nation in tackling Micah Kaiser. Third down. Jackson to the end zone. Touchdown, Seth Dawkins. And a flag is down as well. Let's we see if it stands. May have offensive interference. We'll see if there was a pick play here. The officials have been watching that this season. Pass interference, number one, offense. 15-yard penalty, third down. It was called yeah. on Travion Samuel, and it negates the touchdown. Yeah, I just caught the back end of it as Seth Dawkins came underneath Travion Samuel. He makes contact with a Virginia defender. They're right up in, in this area. We'll see. Yeah, it's an easy call, guys, right there. It's enough of a rub that the official's going to call that. Two flags got thrown on. That's the proper call. Rub, it was really a block. Yeah, yeah. yeah allowed. Dawkins to cut yeah. in front for that touchdown. What the receiver has to do is you just got to run your route towards the defensive back, and that's where the, the rub comes in. You can't really stop there like he did, and that's an easy call for the officials and take six off the board. Right, for Nova. third down and 19. They can get a first at the four-yard line. Jackson to the end zone overthrown for Bonifon. Or check it, that was Jalen Smith yeah. who we wanted there that time. Yeah, and Lamar Jackson, he'd like to have that one back. Great presence in the pocket, great patience, steps up. That one just sailed on him a little bit. He throws that one a little, uh, you know, down and away fastball, and I think Jalen Smith makes that catch for a touchdown. This is Blanton Creaky now for a 40-yard field goal. He's 92% on the season. You see the numbers, that's good for third of the country. And this one is through, 10-7. to 7. Louisville now has the advantage a couple minutes into the second quarter. We'll be back. Louisville defense has really stepped it up in this game today, Randy. Well, and it's not the same defense. Last time out, they gave up 42 points to Wake Forest. They're getting after Kurt Benker today. Good pressure, especially with the defensive line. Getting off their blocks. Burns, Grenard, Trayvon Young playing some good football up front. Winning the line of scrimmage. That's where this game's won, Mike, up front. Well, defensive coordinator Peter Sermon talked to us about it yesterday, so we've got to communicate and have guys be able to beat protections, win the edge, and their cornerbacks, which I know struggled last week. They can't lose today. So far, so good. On the return here for Virginia, it's Joe Reed. Gets up close to the 30-yard line as the Cardinals lead it by three. Well, I mean, I just love what he said was he told his defensive guys, listen, the, the defensive scheme isn't going to protect you, okay? You have to win. You have to make plays step up. He challenged every player on that defensive unit. 
so far they're stepping up to the challenge. And how many different defensive coordinators have we talked to this year that said they just want to try to simplify yeah. things a little bit more, right? Yeah, absolutely. They want their players playing fast and aggressive. That curtain pressure again from behind gets away. And cuts it, and it's almost intercepted. Jair Alexander was there as a pass intended for Andre Lavroni. Is incomplete. Second down. Good job by Alexander to jump this route. Comes back. That's good speed by the corners. We just talked about the corner play. Jair Alexander, one of the captains of this team. Good coverage, almost gets the INT. And good pressure again up front. Hearns again forced Benkert out of the pocket. They'll flip it out to Joe Reed, and Reed is taken down just a gain of a yard. Alexander there again. Boy, they've been really geared up for this one. Challenge this pass. Well, week. you love it when a corner can cover, and then the next play, watch him come up and run support. Lower the boom on the running back, Joe Reed. Good job, Jair Alexander. And this puts Virginia in a third down and nine from their own 30. Ben Kurt somehow gets away and finds Lavrini for the catch in the first down. And that's all Kurt Ben Kurt right there. Great pressure. Up front by Virginia, once again, they run a stunt. It looks like they're going to get to him right in the middle. He dives underneath it, and then look at head up as he rolls to the left to complete that pass and get the first down. Says, all right, Lamar Jackson, I know you yeah. can do it. Well, I can try to do something like this to get away from pressure. But it's going to be a long day if they can't protect Kurt Benkert. He's going to be running for his life like that. First and ten, and this pass sails over the head of his receiver, Donnie Dowling, second down and ten. And Tremaine Washington, the corner on the other side. So you can tell right away, and Peter Sermon got in his defensive backs after that performance against Wake Forest because it's a different unit back there. They're playing aggressive, they're playing fast, they're breaking on the football, and they're trying to step up and make plays. It's exactly what you want from your defensive unit. Virginia spreads him out now. Ben Kurt, low throw. Catch is made, though, by Evan Butts, the tight end, the junior, for a gain of four. Positive yardage to put them in third down and manageable here. But if you're Louisville, you'll give him that underneath. Three, four-yard catch, that's fine. Come up, make the tackle. Does Butts make it? Looks like he had the hand under the ball. Still a third and long position here, and that's exactly what you want if you're the Louisville defense. Offensive line's got to protect Ben Kurt here. Got to give him some time. Fly far side of the field, Benford being chased and has to get rid of it. Zykesis Cannon, the safety was tracking him down and we'll get the call. Yeah, they only rushed four. Cannon came off the edge with a blitz. Looks like it's going to be a legal formation on Virginia. Obviously, Bobby Petrino will decline this, forcing them to punt. Illegal formation, offense. Number 55 is in the backfield, putting five players in the backfield. Penalties decline. Fourth down. And let me tw tell you why the tackle, Brandon Pertow, is in the backfield. Because the defensive ends from Louisville are playing so fast off the ball, he's trying to sneak back a little bit. If his head gets past the belt line of the center, he's considered in the backfield. That's what causes five in the backfield. That's an illegal formation. Great point. And instead, now it's a punt time here situation for Virginia and a fourth and six. Fair catch by Bonifon. So Louisville back on offense. And the reigning Heisman Trophy winner, Lamar Jackson and company. You'll see him coming up next. He's already over 100 yards rushing today. 242 years reigning going back to 1775 with the Army and the yeah. Navy. The Air Force, 70 years old, 1947. First and 10, Louisville. And a carry for Dan Williams. 
Williams spins ahead across the 20 for a first down. It's a gain of 12. Yeah, Day Williams was another running back again. Towards ACL last April, came back in the Florida State game this year. He's a bigger back, six foot two, 227 pounds. Looked pretty good right there. The I formation to go back to Williams. And across the 30 yard line, just shy of the first down, gain of nine. And good job up front by the Louisville offensive line. Controlling the line of scrimmage, getting some runs now, some off tackle runs with a big back. Does wonders for you. Another first down run by Williams. The offensive line looks a little different today for Louisville. Lucas McNeil, 72, has been kicked out to right tackle, and Cole Bentley, the true freshman at 66, gets the start at right guard today, along with her redshirt freshman, Robbie Bell at center, who started every game this year. Yeah, it's a group that's coming together, and you mentioned 66, Cole Bentley, a true freshman. He, he was one of those early enrollees, started the spring game. They're really impressed with him. They've got the eye formation set going as Micah Kaiser, though, breaks down Williams after a gain of just two. Kaiser now has 100 tackles on the season. He had a great game versus Louisville last year, 14 yeah. tackles and two sacks on Jackson. And the true leader, not only of the defense, but really of the Virginia team, met with him last night. Very impressive young man. Having another great season. Jackson stands tall and guns it for Kamari Averitt on the catch for the first down for the Cardinals. Yeah, speaking of true freshman, Averitt, big tight end, 6'6", 271 pounds out of Atlanta, Georgia. Coaching staff really high on him, and good job by Lamar Jackson. They waited for Averitt to clear that zone, puts it on him. The big man makes the catch, turns it up, gets the first down. Really like how Lamar Jackson scans the field, has that patience in the pocket. I think some NFL scouts are starting to look at that, right? You know, you get that moniker as just a runner. Doing pretty good. Back to Williams. Day Williams for a gain of four. But you're right about Jackson. That he knew what he had to work on with his game to be a more complete player so you don't get that yeah. label. Listen, don't think, you know, people didn't think Deshaun Watson was a runner that couldn't play quarterback game. Well, look what he did at Houston before he got injured, unfortunately, this year. You know, Lamar Jackson, a lot of people think he's going to go to the next level, have to play another position. He's going to get a look at quarterback. His second down pass is caught by Seth Dawkins for the first down. And the drive continues now at the Virginia 33-yard line. You know, and his overall knowledge and understanding of the offense is at an all-time high as well. And then when you bring that with the leadership and how hard he's worked, you touched on it earlier. There's a lot of star players out there to just kind of go along status quo. He's worked his butt off each and every year to get better. And, you know, for a Heisman Trophy winner to do that shows true leadership. It's a testament to how hard he's worked. Jackson, pressure, and he dumps it off, incomplete for Day Williams, and when Micah Kaiser was right in his face that time. I mean, that's understanding, right? He's got the, the pressure from Kaiser right in him, but he knows where his check down is. Look, he's not even looking, but he knows he's there. Should have been a completion, the pack dropped it, but that's understanding the offense and where your check downs, where your hot reads are. Four of 10 for the 35 yards passing but over a hundred yards rushing with a touchdown so far today. And the play clock. Timeout. Louisville. It was down to zero. They got the timeout though before it. 7.07 to go first half. Cardinals lead by three.
Tonight at 10.30 p.m. Eastern, 7.30 Pacific on ESPN. Top-ranked boxing, Artur Beterbiev battles Enrico Colin for the IBF light heavyweight belt. Coming your way tonight from Fresno, California. Second down and 10 for the Cardinals from the 33. The ninth play of the drive coming up. Jackson kept it. Bumps off the initial tackler, still on his feet, and gets inside the 15-yard line. He got away from Chris Peace, who was right there on him, and picks up 18 yards. Well, we talked about it in the open. He gained about 10 pounds of muscle in the offseason, and it shows here. As Chris Peace is a 6'2", 245-pound defensive end, he bounces off and breaks another tackle in route to his run. Just doing it all is Lamar Jackson. This Cardinals team third in the nation in total offense, doing most of it on the ground here today with 166 yards. Reggie Bonifon is now in the backfield to the left of Jackson. And blocking for him. Jackson's not going to get much. And they try to go just straight. Quarterback sweep with Bonifant leading the way out there. Jackson wisely gets to the boundary, goes out of bounds. When you can avoid the hits, avoid them. That's, that's more experience there. And that's the thing. With a running quarterback like that, you always have to be weary of how many hits yeah. they take. Second down, Jackson floats it up for the end zone. And this is caught for the touchdown, Seth Dawkins. Fourteen-yard strike for the score. I mean, the coverage was excellent, Mike. You cannot throw a pass any better. Lamar Jackson puts it right where his receiver, Seth Dawkins, can catch it, and only Seth Dawkins can catch it. One-on-one -on, -one on the outside. Look at him drop it up there. I mean, excellent coverage. I mean, you can't cover anymore. Bryce Hall, 34, is where he's supposed to be, but the ball is perfect. Accuracy, wasn't that something yeah. you were mentioning at the start of this broadcast? Accuracy, let's add touch to that, because that's what that is. Accuracy and touch. You almost feel bad for the corner, Bryce Hall, because you can't cover any better. You got your hand where it's supposed to be, the ball just goes right over it. Ten point. Cardinals advantage now at 17 to 7. And Jackson, who accounts for 426 yards per game for the Cardinals has 169 here today. We go back to that number for a moment 426 Rainey. Yeah, that is more than 82 FBS teams overall. It's incredible by himself. So we talk about the numbers right and we talked about that they're better than last year but yet he doesn't he's not getting a peep reference to Heisman this year. Okay, he's in my top five. I guarantee you that. I understand the team hasn't won the way they're supposed to, okay, or, or the way teams need to to be in the Heisman consideration. But the fact that those numbers are unbelievable and he won it last year, you got to at least mention the guy. I agree. Joe Reed, kickoff return specialist for Virginia. What does he have here? Tripped up. 25 yard line, the tackle by Chucky Williams. And Williams going at it a little bit there with Zane Zandier for Virginia. And Williams stays out there, the starting safety, the senior, one of the captains. How about Kurt Benkert today so far for Virginia? What does he do here? Pass is almost intercepted. He almost throws a pick six. Tremaine Washington jumped that route. Well, I'm going to sound like a broken record, but we talked about it before. The DBs, especially the corners, needed to play more aggressive than they did last week. And boy, are they ever. Tight coverage and just, you know, your corners are traditionally your best athletes. you got to be able to break on a ball. That's what Washington did there. Beckert's pass drops over the middle by Daniel Ham. And they're going to be faced with a third down and 10 here. And offensively, it's not where you want to be. Third and long is a 
Tough down and distance, obviously, not to be captain obvious, but boy, defensively, Peter Sermon has him right where he wants him. Benker, sideline round, the catch is made by Donnie Dowling, and he has enough for the first down. Smarts to get past the stick right at the 35-yard line. Sure is, Dowling, the senior from Richmond, Virginia. You're right, Mike. Runs that out cut right at the 35-yard line. That was the line to gain. Ben Kirk puts it there. They move the chains. Ben Kirk on a run. Throws it low for Dubois. Flag is down. I, th I thought we were going to have a holding. It looked like it was number one, Jordan Ellis, the running back in protection, trying to block James Hearns. It's a mismatch. Number one, offense, 10-yard penalty. First down. Well, you called it. You see it on the left side of the screen, number one. Now he's trying to block a defensive end. Hearns bull rushes him at first and then uses speed. Watch the little wrap of the right arm. That's what the referee looks at right at the bottom of the screen. That's an easy call for him. It's the fourth penalty so far today by Louisville, or by Virginia, excuse me. First and 20, and again, Ben Curtis chased and has to throw it to the sideline. And they're doing it with the front four. I mean, the front four for Louisville is playing lights out. They're getting by that offensive line. They're winning the line of scrimmage. And they're making Ben Kurt run for his life. And that's where it starts, obviously. Always. That's what Peter Sermon told us, defensive coordinator, yesterday that, you know, we saw last week's tape. They're secondary. Right. Yeah. Was by themselves. They're on an island out there. It was one-on-one, -on -one and they were getting picked apart. Yep. they got to get the pressure up front, and they're getting it here today. Fishes timeout for an injured player. Washington tying his shoe. Double knotted. Double yeah. knotted, Tremaine. Yeah, because last week he was all up against their true freshman corners, and it was tough sledding for that Louisville defense. It was. I mean, and again, watching them on tape against Wake Forest and then almost through a first half of this game, it's a different defensive unit. You know, Coach Sermon said he was going to sprinkle in a little Tampa 2 defense, which you don't see much anymore, which... All that really is, Mike, it's fancy for a cover two. Two safeties in the middle field, and you'll drop your linebacker back into coverage as well. So a couple little wrinkles. Suck it down, Benker. And it's dropped again. Now Ham's got to help his quarterback yeah. out here. You can't keep having that happen. Listen, it's the right call on second and long. Get half of it back, right? A little underneath route with Daniel Ham, and he just drops it. You just can't do that, and now you're third and 20. And this is an important drive here. Momentum on the side of Louisville. Ten-point lead late in this yeah. first half. You definitely don't want to give it back to him with under five minutes left, and then they go down and score and try to put this thing away before half, or, or at least be really comfortable. And Kurt, and he loses the football. And Virginia looks like they recovered it. Chris Glazer, the offensive lineman, is James Hearns. Yeah. That is another knockdown by him. James Hearns is playing lights out, Mike, from that right defensive end spot. He's the one. He never doesn't give up on the play. He gets the Ben Kurt from behind and strips it again. Virginia lucky to jump on it, but still going to punt and give Louisville the ball back with plenty of time to get another score here before the half. Reggie Bonifon has it from the 37. Here he goes. Bonifon fight to the hole. Flag is down as he is tracked down from behind by Joey Blunt. Flag is all the way back to the 34. Did the return, illegal block in the back, number two, return team, 10-yard penalty, first down. Yeah, it, it was Corey Reed. You hear the boot box, but I think it was the right call. We'll be back. Louisville with possession late in the first half, up by 10. Louisville leads it 17-7. Large part, their Heisman Trophy quarterback, Lamar Jackson. We talked about accuracy in the open, check. We talked about decision making in the open. Here he scrambles out, live for another down, throw it away.
And we talked about his elite speed in the open. Check again as he goes to the house. These are all things, Mike, that he's improved on from last year, which is hard to believe because, of course, he won the Heisman Trophy last year. Well, and you mentioned Deshaun Watson, and, you know, I think a guy like him helps pave the way a little bit there because you see what he's done in the NFL. I do, too. Injury, I do, too. I think there will be an NFL team when it's all said and done. It's going to give him a shot at quarterback because he has all the tools. Play fake. Standing tall again. Going deep over the middle for Smith. It is broken up. And Quinn Blandy got a hand on it there for Virginia. The player down as well. And that was one Thornhill. That was also there. So Thornhill. Officials timeout for an injured player. Shaken up. Yeah, they come out of the break. They try to hit a big shot down the middle of the field. Good coverage by Thornhill. And then, of course, you'll see three Quinn Blanding come over as well. Time there jumps perfectly. A little, little friendly fire there, I think, uh, with, with Thornhill. Left leg might have got a little rolled up as his teammate Quinn Blanding came over. But that's what you need to do on those deep post routes in the middle as a free safety. Quinn Blanding coming over. Another guy uh, that's going to have a real opportunity to, Mike, to play on Sundays la next year is Quinn Blanding. Six foot two, 210 pounds, true free safety. That's a good sign. Coming up tonight, 7 Eastern on ESPN. Also streaming live on the app, of course. Number two, Alabama, and number 16, Mississippi State. We've seen one running quarterback here today. How about Nick Fitzgerald? He's rushed for over 100 yards in his last four games. Longest streak by an SEC quarterback in 20 years. Is it yeah. going to be enough to beat Alabama? I like Nick Fitzgerald, but I think Bama's going to take the runaway and make him beat him with a throw. But how about Desmond Howard pick Mississippi State today on game day? I saw that. Jackson sacked and fumbles the football that is recovered by Kenny Thomas. His offensive lineman gets it back. And that's what Virginia needs to do. That's what they haven't done, put that pressure on. The FBS quarterbacks with 1,000 passing yards and 800 rushing yards. The only two, Jackson yeah. and Nick Fitzgerald, coming up later tonight. Fitzgerald's a big quarterback too, Mike. He's six foot five, about 240 pounds, but he's an excellent runner. But again, he needs to beat teams with the pass, and I think that Alabama defense, even though they're a little banged up, they'll take that run away and force him to beat him with his arm. Or Jackson with his legs here, he fumbles again. And again, it is recovered by Louisville. And Jerron Christian this time, the left tackle covers it up. And, well, and just like that, Virginia's going to get the ball back here. And you just got to have ball security. It's just an excellent job to rip around at the football and knock it out. And if you're Lamar Jackson, you got to secure that thing high and tight in traffic like that. Yeah, I don't see that too often, nor less on back-to-back -back plays. Yeah. And, and Louisville's lucky to jump on that. A real good opportunity now for the Cavaliers with... 235 and ticking left in this first half, but they have two timeouts to work with, and Louisville's going to take one of theirs here to well, use some clock. And I know that really Time burns out. Bobby Petrino because he didn't think that was a block in the back to start that possession. He thought the nice punt return from Reggie Bonifant should have stayed. Good point. That actually negated a 40-yard yeah. return by Bonifant, and you're right. Yeah, so. He was hot during the, during the break getting after the officials. Well, you were talking about the Heisman. Yeah. You know, how you thought that it's, it really is a shame for Lamar Jackson and not even really, for some reason, now be in the conversation. You have him, of He's course. He's in mine, and, yeah. Yep, in your Heismanology. Again, you know, a few weeks back, Saquon Barkley was the leader in the clubhouse, right? And then, lo and behold, he has a couple tough games. Baker Mayfield is playing out of this world. Josh Adams has a night, a chance tonight to really impress. Bryce Love played last night. Another great performance by him. And I still have Lamar Jackson in there. I just don't know how you can. <laughs> There's always that discussion. Is it about the numbers? Is it about where the team Listen, finishes? Roll the tape and show his stats. Okay, that's all I'm going to say. Kick almost blocked. Fair catch being called for and made by the Cavaliers. They'll have good starting field position here, and we will tell you they're coming up at the half. Chris Cotter, Chip Kelly, Jonathan Vilma. We'll have a lot to talk about. Cowboys and another thriller, and so many top teams in action here this oh, weekend, right? Yeah. Especially in the top ten. It's amazing. Listen, we're a little biased, right? I love college football. I think it's the greatest team sport, but by weekends like this, you live for. Virginia starting from the 42 with two timeouts and 224 to work with here down 10.
The give to Ellis. Just across midfield and into Louisville territory, but a yard shy of the yeah. first down. They kind of got away from the running game with Ellis here in really the, the second quarter. So plenty of time. Get back with your midfield. It would be a huge momentum boost for this offense if they can put some points up here at the end of this first half. Look at that, just five rushing yards for Virginia. Second down and one here. Ben Kurt swings it out, and this time Pan makes the catch and redeems himself. After a couple of drops, it's a gain of nine. Yeah, good recognition by Ben Kurt there as Ham runs a wheel route, but Ben Kurt puts it on him right away to pick up that first down. It's a good throw and catch. 140 on the clock. Ben Kurt airs it out, looking for Lavroni. Knocked down, incomplete. Trumaine to Washington back there yet again for this Louisville defense. Yeah, Washington is another guy. We've called his name out a lot, and Peter Sermon said, listen, my DBs, they don't have to pick everything off, but just get in coverage and knock it down, and that's exactly what Trumaine Washington did right there. Right, his words were just don't lose, which yeah. is <laughs> give up a long pass for a touchdown. First play of the game last week was a 50-yard game. Here's Ellis. About four, now maybe five, as he gets close to the 35-yard line. I can't hear you. You want to try to at least get something going here. A field goal is huge, yeah. make it a one-possession yeah, game. You want that momentum in the locker room, something positive to talk about. Then they're, they're taking their time, and that's obviously because they don't want to give the ball back to Lamar Jackson at all this half. And it's third down and five. Ben Kirk, first down catch, left Rody. And inside the 25-yard line, clock stops with 101 left. A good route by Lavroni, right at the sticks, makes the catch, turns it up, and again, Ben Kurt running this two-minute drill here perfectly. Sense of urgency, but not rushing. Ben Kurt, oh, wide right open! The catch for the touchdown by Evan Bucks, the tight end. And the Cavaliers will take that here late in this first half. Yeah. I mean, that's how you run a two-minute offense. Calm, cool, and collect it. Kurt Benkert does it one better than just setting him up for a field goal here as he hits his tight end, Evan Bucks, a little seam route right down the middle. He's just lined up as an inline tight end. The backer never goes with him. Dorian Etheridge, the true freshman, and a great throw by Benkert to the tight end. And that was great recognition by them there. He made a quick cut to the right, back to the middle. There was no help inside there. Yeah, no safety in the middle. It's great read, great recognition. Boy, just like that, there's the momentum that Virginia offense was looking for. I'm talking about a field goal. They're yeah. talking about a touchdown. <laughs> I'm like, Mike, please. I just love how they didn't rush, Mike. You see, no panic. You have a sense of urgency. But, boy, calm, cool, and collecting. You give credit to Bronco Mendenhall because he's the kind of guy that, boy, has disciplined teams. Evan Butts with his second touchdown catch of the season. 48 ticks left in this first half, and now it's a three-point ball game. You know, these two have played close games in all of their previous meetings. This is the sixth meeting of all time between the two teams. The previous five decided by a touchdown or less, including the first three and a field goal in the closing minutes. I mean, this has been a battle when these two teams have gotten together. And that's what you expect when you're in a Power 5 conference like the ACC week in and week out. You're going to get battled, and these two teams always go at it. There we go on the return. Samuel and cut down at the 25-yard line. Time now to take a look at our Jared Drive recap, brought to you by Jared the Galleria of Jewelry. Yeah, Kurt Ben Kurt, the quarterback, just leading them down the field. Hits his running back Daniel Hamm on a little wheel route, then picks up the first down to Lavroni, who's having a nice game. And then the payoff, Evan Butts, the big tight end, a little seam route down the middle. And just like that, it's a three-point ball game. We may be coming back to that very crucial play by them late in that first half. You had mentioned it. Yep. Momentum there was on the side of Louisville. <laughs> 43 seconds left, Jackson. 
catch is made at the 30-yard line, a short pickup. And you always got to be careful late in the half. Only one timeout for Louisville. Don't want to make any mistakes. We saw the fumbles the last possession. And that's the last thing you want to do. If you can get a shot and get it downfield a little bit, but you want to be, you know, conservative about it. You don't want to take a big risk here. First catch by Javante Backley. Now to the other side for Seth Dawkins. It is a first down at the 36. Clock reads 31 seconds left. Still the one timeout for the Cardinals. Yeah, and they're going to use it right now, mm -hmm. Mike. Their third and final half. 30 seconds. This is the best season that Virginia's had in quite some time. Ball eligible now for the first time since 2011, thanks to this come from behind win over Georgia Tech last week at home. Well, and you know, talking to Micah Kaiser about this, Mike, he just said in his older Virginia teams, he, he, he doesn't. Doesn't think they would have won that game. Mm -hmm. That was a catch by Lavroni, a 27-yard touchdown with a minute 22 to go as the Cavaliers rallied for a 40-36 win. Well, and you see there, picked to finish last in the preseason poll, and what a great job Bronco Mendenhall's done in his second season. When you think about it, Mike, there's not a player on that team in Virginia that's ever been to a bowl game. So, I mean, how big was it last week for them to come back from behind, get that six win, and then the big question was, he said they've never had success before, so how would they come out and answer today? Would they be flat? Well, they're playing pretty good. Yeah, it's been a good answer. Down by only three here. 31 seconds left in this first half. Jackson, a lot of room. And nobody open. That was the question coming in. Was Virginia going to have a letdown? You know, how would they handle that success knowing they yeah. were already going to a bowl and really having a very tough schedule for the rest yeah. of the way? And Bronco Mendenhall looked at us and said, I don't know, because it's never happened. So we'll see. <laughs> very honest answer, you know. But you got to be happy for the kids, you know, busting their tails. You got some coaching changes. You bring a new coach in and picked last in the ACC and already bowl eligible. <laughs> Jackson cuts it, Jalen Smith on the catch and into Virginia territory. 35 yard line, still 17 seconds to go, a gain of 29 yards. Yeah, the clock will start once it resets. It might be a spike here by Lamar Jackson, unless they have a play call. Looks like they're going to run a play. They don't have any timeouts left. It's a low snap. Flags are down. It was Virginia that called a timeout. Timeout. Virginia. They're second. 30 seconds. See the arm strength right here by Lamar Jackson, but he can really spin it. Look at that tight spiral right in rhythm and on time to Jalen Smith. And that's the thing about college football. Even though you don't have any timeouts, you can still use the middle of the field because the clock stops. And I really think Virginia bailed him out a little bit by calling that timeout. They may actually put a couple ticks back on the clock. We'll see. I was going to agree yeah. with you on that. Yeah, they're the one that... Please reset the game clock to 13 yeah. seconds. Please put 13 seconds on the game clock, which is the point where the timeout was called. Yeah, because it gives Louisville a chance Thank to you. get a few extra yards for their kicker, Blanton Creaky, who is just really one of the best. A sophomore here, third in the nation, 92% converting field goals, has one already today. He's 12 for 13 in the season for his career. He's already first all time and 87% converting on field goals and it's 27 made in his career is already in the top 10 and 40 a weapon. Yeah, and I was gonna say 48 yard career long from here. If they don't gain another yard, it'll be a 52 yarder. Jackson with pressure, dumps it off and a catch is made by Bagley, but the clock is gonna yeah. run here. They're not gonna get it spiked, Mike. The half's gonna end. Jackson tries to get it down there. Let's see. Clock was reading zeros. No, the half is over. Yep. Time expired. And that's the problem right there. If you don't play the sideline and you're you're on the routes underneath before the first down, it's exactly what you do. Now replay should look at this. And we'll get a great look at it here. Look at the clock. You see it. Boy, so close. And we're looking at it in slow motion. And I'll tell you the other thing, too. The offensive line has to be set for a full count before it's snapped as well. 
You know, on our clock, and it's super slow mo. It looks like it started to go off before the game clock hit one. Well, that's it. We've reached the half and another close matchup with the Cavaliers and the Cardinals. After the break, we'll join the studio for the halftime report. Stay tuned. Back in Louisville, Kentucky, here at Papa John's Cardinal Stadium, 17-14. Cardinals lead it by three, and another close matchup between these two. Welcome back, everyone. Mike Corey, Rainey, and Golia. Very important drive by Virginia late in that first half with that touchdown to cut this to a three-point game. It was. Louisville had all the momentum in that first half, but a big drive for Virginia in this second half, though. you got to come out, got to get some running game going. Only 10 yards rushing for the Hoos in that first half. Lamar Jackson already 100 yards rushing once again. Fourth consecutive game, and uh, the record watch is on. He's been spectacular yeah. once again. Yeah, Lamar Jackson just has to keep being Lamar Jackson, doing what he's doing in the passing game and with his feet. Virginia's going to get the ball to start this second half. And their dangerous return man there, number two, Joe Reed, who ran one back last week for a touchdown. Pass this one from the five. And dives across the 30-yard line, and that's where the Cavaliers will start this second half. Kurt Ben Kurt, what did you think from him of the first half performance? Well, three sacks. He was kind of you know running around, not comfortable in the pocket uh, with that defensive front from Louisville getting after him. But boy, that last two minute drive was run to perfection. Let's see if they try to get number one Jordan Ellis going a little bit here in this second half. It will be Ellis. On the carry, he gets tripped up early, just a one-yard gain on first down. And you hear announcers all the time say, establish the run, establish the run. What does that mean and why? If you can get positive runs on, especially first down, it just makes the defense really inch forward to play the run, and it opens it up for the offense. So that's why you always want to get a running game going. If you, on a defense, if you can make a team one-dimensional, it's just so much easier to concentrate on one thing. Second down again, Ellis. And they do try to establish it, Rudy. You're right. And he gets a first down run out of it to the 42-yard line. Here's some first-half numbers for you from these two in the first 30 minutes. Yeah, and obviously the big one we talked about, the 10 yards. Of course, the sack yards come off that. I think they lost about 27 yards, but still would have only been 37 yards rushing. Uh, Louisville, you know, the passing yards a little down for Lamar Jackson. He thought they'd be up a little bit. And the one for six for Louisville on third down, not good. Well, we talked about it from the start. He is averaging over 300 yards passing yeah. all game. <laughs> Give credit to that Virginia secondary. Ben Kirk picks up a block from Ellis and fires, and the catch is made by Olamide Zacchaeus. What a grab. 26th straight game with a catch for Zacchaeus. Now watch the throw by Kent Burke against his body. Watch this. Look at that. And he fires it in there. Too many times you see quarterbacks try to put that in there with touch. No, sir. You need to rifle that thing. Zacchaeus right down the sideline makes the catch. That's a great throw by Kurt Benkert. And a good catch by Zacchaeus. So it is a very quiet player. Doesn't say all that much. But his play on the field certainly speaks volumes. 22-yard pickup. Benkert, the outside for Lavroni this time on the reception. And he had a team high four as there was a flag down in that first half. They went his way most of the time. Ineligible player downfield, number 67. Offense, five yard penalty. First down. It, and, you know, it's called on Jack English, and I'm going to tell you why he's downfield. Offensive linemen can only be three yards downfield okay that was an rpo that's called a run pass option where kurt benkert has the ability to throw it or run it what happened was he went backside it took too long and that's why jack english wandered past three yards
First down and 15. And a pass is dropped by Dowling. I want to go back to that for a moment and what you were just saying. How do you know, though? You know, you're just, you're out Correct. It's you a no timing. idea what's going it on. It was there. a play side to the short side of the field, RPO run pass option. It wasn't there. Benker went to the other side of the field. That took an extra couple counts, and that's why offensive line, and then wander past that three yards. Gotcha. And they're going to call illegal uh, man downfield. RPOs are tough for offensive linemen. They're tough for defenses to right. defend as well. Second down and 15, and Benker going in the wrong direction there. And, and his offensive lineman, Chris Glazer, out there on that right tackle position, just you know, get a little bit more. You know, you get that block right there, and then Benker can maybe drop back yeah. a little bit, not have to keep running towards that sideline. Yeah. Famarara right there as well. The one thing I'm impressed with the the uh, four defensive linemen, and they're rotating a couple more through, is the speed from those big guys getting after Benker. Big third down here to start this second half for Virginia as they trail it by three. It's third and 15, though. Good protection this time. Ben Kurt is on time of the pass. Levroni in the catch, but it's going to be right at the original line of scrimmage. It'll be fourth down. Yeah, and even though it's fourth and long, a decision here for Bronco Mendenhall. You're at the 36. A lot of times you don't want to punt it here. You're a little too far for a field goal. We'll see what he's going to do. Looks like he's going to play field position. Important, though, for the punter, Lester Coleman. Do not kick this thing in the end zone because your net is only 16 yards. You've right. got to get it inside the 10 in there. Nice high punt. Coleman. We need to bounce here. And not the one they were looking for. Touchback, and as you said, a net of 16. And we mentioned him at the start, of course, you would in any time that Louisville is on TV with Lamar Jackson. What did he do well here from the start of what you've talked about in his improvement? Yeah, and this is what he's improved on from last year. And look at we're going to put a little clock here. Watch him just take his time, patience. He gets it off in 2.6 seconds, waiting for his big tight end to clear. And once he's ready to throw it, he launches it. Again, steps up in the pocket, patience, waiting for his receiver to clear the zone. That was Jalen Smith. And then again here, watch this accuracy here and touch as he drops it to his receiver, Seth Dawkins. All things that I believe Lamar Jackson has improved upon from last season. And they'll keep it on the ground here to start this drive. You know, it's hard to, to say a guy's improving. They won the Heisman Trophy right. a year before, but that's exactly what Lamar Jackson has done this year. And again, it's a testament to him and how hard he works as a leader. Four yard run by Williams, Malik Williams. Keeper, Jackson, and a good job by Virginia defensively. In the first half, Reedy, they would have let him go for quite some yards on that play, not this time. That's the eye discipline we talked about. He's the first threat that can hurt you in zone read. So if you're Micah Kaiser, Jordan Mack, those inside linebackers, you have to read Lamar Jackson first. And if he keeps it like he did there, come up and make the tackle. That's an excellent job by the defense. And believe me, that is... Uh, something that Bronco Mendenhall talked about at halftime. Jackson dumps it off for Seth Dawkins. And corralled at the 37-yard line. Jordan Mack and Micah Kaiser. Lamar Jackson is about 76 yards away now from becoming the first player ever to have 3,000 passing yards and 1,000 rushing yards for consecutive seasons. Pretty good, huh? Yeah. <laughs> I told you there'd be some records yeah. and numbers out there today with him, right? Second down and three. A lot of options here for the Cardinals. Jackson. And that's a first down run. When we talk about his patience in the passing game, he also has very good patience in this run game, in his own read. And he really rides his running back, and he keeps his eyes up, and he's watching the defense, and he pulls it out, and he's a dynamic enough athlete that he can bounce it himself or take it straight up the middle, which he did right there. 
That's now 11 carries for him for 128 rushing yards in the contest. Out of the air, it's overthrown. The flag is down, though. Jalen Smith, that's who he wanted, and he was covered by Juan Thornhill. Holding, number 21, defense, 10-yard penalty, automatic first down. Didn't need to do that there. I didn't, and really, I don't think this ball was catchable. You're going to see Thornhill right at the bottom of the screen. Grab him right there. That's a good call as the ball sails away, but regardless, he, he grabbed them, and you got defensive holding. Well, that's the thing. I love those when they say, yeah, it's uncatchable. Yeah, it's yeah. Like, yeah because he, he was held. Yeah. That's why he wasn't even close to it. And that time, Bronco Manel sent a safety blitz at Lamar Jackson. Good job up front by Louisville to give him time to get that pass off. Pistol formation, the keeper by Jackson trying to stiff arm defenders. And again, how about the play there by Chris Peace, Brenton Nelson. They're tracking him down. Much yeah. better job by this Cavalier defense here. Watch Peace, number 13. He's 6'2", 245 pounds. He plays defense now. Look at the speed. This is Lamar Jackson. Tries to stiff arm and, and Chris Peace says, nope, I'm going to get you. Well, having a great year, Chris Peace. Yes. Sack leader and tackle for loss leader for this Virginia defense. Five wide on this set on second down. Pressure. Jackson gets away. And will be tracked down from behind. Good job there. And that was the initial burst by Jordan Mack. And then he came back to make the play. Well, that's the effort you want. You'll see Jordan Mack right up the middle. This is him. But look at the effort as he comes from behind to still make the tackle. That's what you love to see, that extra effort not giving up on a play. Excellent job, Jordan Mack. He's a former defensive back that's big enough, 225 pounds. He's kind of moved up into an outside linebacker position. Third leading tackler for the Cavaliers and puts them in a third down and nine. Jackson, and the pass is caught. It's a first down. Sliding catch by Seth Dawkins as he fell back for a gain of 10. That's a nice catch by Dawkins. That's the first time today, really, Lamar Jackson out of rhythm, doesn't get it in front of his receiver. He's going to throw it behind him on the slant route, but a good adjustment by Dawkins to make that catch and pick up the first down. So a first set of downs from the 34-yard line for Louisville. A little snap, but good job by Jackson there to get it over to Malik Williams for a gain of five. Malcolm Cook makes the tackle. Yeah, good hard run by Malik Williams, and that's what Bobby Petrino wants to see out of his running backs. I mean, Louisville's dealt with injuries on the defensive end. They yep. had injuries on the offense there with Malik Williams, who you know, had an elbow injury. Day Williams had a torn ACL back in April. Yep. So they haven't had their full complement of guys it's, on either side of the ball. It's been a very banged-up unit, that running back group, and uh, really healthy for the first time in a long time, all of them. Toss goes out to Williams. And the ball comes loose. Louisville has recovered it. And yeah, we'll take a look at it. just a toss sweep. Old school. You got big offensive alignment out in front. We'll see the end of it here. Just got to secure it. The ball's in the proper hand, and it's it's Micah Kaiser that rips it out. And you talked about the, the elbow injury to Malik Williams, and a lot of times you come back and you're in that live contact a lot. It's different than practice, and you got to be able to secure that football. Good run. You just got to finish it off. Go to the ground with the ball. So they change it up now to the other Williams. Day Williams in the backfield. Jackson airs it out for Smith for the end zone. Touchdown, Louisville. Touchdown. Now, if you're a Virginia fan, you're yelling at your TV right now. That was offensive pass interference because from the booth, and we'll get another look at it, it looked like Jalen Smith might have separated with that left arm. We'll get a great look at it here. Phenomenal throw once again from Lamar Jackson. See the end of it here. You see that separation right there with the left hand? It could easily be called. I've seen it called before. They don't. The ball drops in there. And it's a touchdown for Louisville. I saw that too, right? Yeah. There was maybe a few calls in that first half, too. I know the one you had said there were there was an offside. It looked like a guy for Louisville lined up defensively that resulted in a play. Here's a touchdown on what maybe could have been a potential interference. Jackson now showing the skills to the air. Jalen Smith touchdown. Cardinals by 10.
Third touchdown catch of the season for Jalen Smith, though, here, Randy, questionable. Well, it's only a foul if they call it, and they didn't, but I think Jalen Smith, that's a savvy move by a wide receiver. That left hand, a little separation, could easily be called offensive pass interference, but it wasn't. The six will stand for Louisville. And it's back to a 10-point Cardinals advantage now at 24 to 14, midway through this third quarter. Frankie on the kickoff. And Joe Reed from his six yard line. And not much happening for him here today on the returns. And we'll take a timeout. 6 44, third quarter. Virginia back on offense, down by 10. Stadium today for the Cardinals and the Cavaliers. Mike Corey, Reedy, and Goya with the third quarter. 10-point deficit now for Virginia. They have first and 10 at the 23. We're ready to go. <laughs> We're waiting. There we go. Fire it up. Ref wasn't ready. Listen, start on him, right? <laughs> Hand off to Ellis, and shut down after a game, just a couple to the 25-yard line. What do you think if you're Virginia here? You battled back at the end of the first half, being down 10, now facing a similar situation. Yeah, I mean, I like the discipline this team has under Brock Mendehall. They take their time. Uh, ben Kurt's a good quarterback to lead them. You just got to get a little more running going to open up the offense for you, but they're in this game. right in his face and it was Trayvon Young he got a piece of it too on that deflection there's a fumble recovery earlier there is no foul for Tesla Browning there's a receiver in the area third down and I tell you as well as the DBs have played for Louisville today to me the, the defensive front that mm -hmm. defensive line all of them across the board have all gotten off the football and they've caused problems for the offensive line of Virginia they're really winning the line of scrimmage they really have. It's been a solid group today. Third down and eight. Benker guns it. Low throw incomplete. Wanted Zacchaeus. And Louisville has forced a three and out here. Yeah, a little bit behind Zacchaeus. He can't make the adjustment to make that catch. He might have been a little short. And this is one where, where Ben Kirk just got to get in front of him a little bit. He's trying to sit between that zone. A little bit behind him. Can't make the catch. It's a good route. You want to sit. You see Zacchaeus right in the middle. Sit right there. Ball just a touch behind him. And goes incomplete. You just saw the black jerseys. They have been swarming to the football here today. Lester Coleman's punt. Taking Reggie Bonifon back to his 24-yard line. He chased all the way back, and now he turns it up. Still on his feet, and knocked out of bounds on the sideline. Excellent starting field position for the Cardinals. It'll be the 41-yard line when we return. The Raisman, reigning Heisman Trophy winner, Lamar Jackson, in the offense after this. You're watching the ACC on ESPN. Coming your way from Louisville today for the Cardinals and the Cavaliers. And how about tonight at 7 o'clock Eastern on ESPN, Alabama and Mississippi State. See if the Bulldogs can pull off the upset. Nick Fitzgerald along with Lamar Jackson, who you're watching here today, the only FBS quarterbacks with 1,000-plus passing yards and 800-plus rushing yards this season. Yeah, I think the college football playoff committee did uh, everyone a disservice. Big run here by Jay Williams. Chris Moore finally tracks him down. Gain of 20. Yeah, that's the way to run the ball with some explosiveness right there. Off the perimeter to turn it up. And I was going to say, they did him a disservice because you're ranked Alabama number two. That's all you need to do, right? Give them a chip sure. to play on their shoulder, right? <laughs> exactly. Cardinals in Cavaliers territory now. 
combination of Day Williams and Malik Williams, two guys that they haven't had the full complement of them for Louisville this year, have really run the ball well today. And it's good to get them both back in there. And you're right, Mike. You can see, you know, they're knocking the rust off, running with some power, and, and they've lacked that uh, without that group being healthy. It's 25 Day Williams who tore his ACL in April. He returned versus Florida State back on October 21st. The six months to rehab from that. Jackson, keeper, first and more. To the 20. And we've talked about all the great things Lamar Jackson does. The one thing I haven't mentioned, he's got excellent vision. I mean, it's usually reserved for very good running backs. But he can do it all. I mean, to, to cut it back door like that, plant that left foot, see it, peripheral to hit it, that's special. Gain of 14 yep. yards on that run, first and 10. 143 rushing today for him. Pressure. Oh, open is Smith. One-handed grab. Touchdown, Cardinals. Sports Center highlight right there. All over the place. Sports Center top 10. Book it right now from the start of that play to the end. You have everything. Great patience in the pocket by Lamar Jackson. He doesn't run. He shuffles the feet, Mike. He moves up. He lets it go. I'm in the booth saying he overthrew him. And all of a sudden, Jalen Smith says, nope. Boom. One hand. Stick it to it. Touchdown. Wow. And we talked about it all game, just the patience. Watch him in the pocket. He's going to move. His head's up. He just shuffles. He's not looking to run. Steps up, launches it. And then his receiver, Jalen Smith, who, who, oh, by the way, the coach has said needs to step up and make big-time plays. Guess what, Coach Petrino? Jalen Smith just stepped up and made a sports center top 10. Look at that. Beautiful. Woo! What an incredible catch by Smith. Jackson's now over 300 yards of total offense for the 10th straight game after that touchdown. We might have to check those gloves. Maybe a little yes. stick them on those gloves. That baby landed in there like Velcro. That's something that you see in practice and when you're messing around yeah. before the game, right? You know, but what a grab. And he had to do it there. Sometimes you see receivers just try to do it for the heck of it. That extension, he needed that, and it was it was perfect. Right. That was the only way. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah, you think in basketball sometimes, and you want to go behind your back and do all these things. If that's the only thing you can do to make a move and make a play, yeah. that's when that trickery needs to happen. Second touchdown catch in a row, too, for Smith. Here's Joe Reed. He's been a highlight reel himself on returns, but not tonight. As we go back to Lamar Jackson in that play. Yeah, just watch the movement. I love how his head's up, st slide steps, piece the defensive end. Watch his reaction. He thought, I guarantee you, Lamar Jackson thought he overthrew him when he let that thing go. And boy, Jalen Smith, that's what a six foot four, 219 pound wide receiver is supposed to do make catches like that. That's how you step up. And that's a separation touchdown yeah. grab right there. 17 points, crowds fired up, momentum's on the side for Louisville. Benker with an excellent fake, and he wants to go deep for Lavroni, and it's knocked down and broken up. And it's Trumaine Washington. What a game he's had tonight in the secondary, the senior out of Miami, Florida. I mean, great coverage by Tremaine Washington. No safety help. He's one-on-one. -on -one. Ben Kurt had a tight end underneath. Probably should have took it, but he's looking for the home run. Washington step for step with the receiver. And listen, that's as much his ball as it is the receiver. Lavroni, he goes up and makes the play. Yeah, there's a little contact there, but that's just football right there, folks. Dumps it off Ellis, and that's going nowhere. And it all starts from the pressure up front. You said it, Reedy. And this Louisville defense.
has flipped the script. I mean, this is not the film that we watched. They sure have pressure up front. Benkert has to dump it off, and then safety D. Smith comes up and lays the boom. And Peter Sermon, the defensive coordinator, is feeling pretty good about this defensive unit today. And look out. Here they come at the line of scrimmage. They could tee off now, third down and ten. And it's Ellis. And Virginia almost gets a first down, but he picks up nine to the 31 yard line. Yeah, the spot, I think he's going to be a little short. And I tell you what, Jordan Ellis almost picked it up because at the end of that run, he rolled over on top of a player. You're not down yet until you hit the ground. We'll get a look at it. Watch the end of this, Mike. Ellis is going to go to the ground. Let's see. He's going to be on top of a player. Right here, he's not down. You can sit on a player. He's not down, he's not down, he's down there. That's a good point. So he was real close to that, but I think the spot was correct. It'll be Lester Coleman to punt once again. Blame game. Offense. Five yard penalty. Fourth down. We almost wonder if. Bronco Mendenhall was just trying to take his time there, hoping that maybe replay would take a look at that. Right. No, but I, I agree with you. After he did roll over the guy, he did land. It was close. Right there. Yep. Yeah. The yep. 31. Then they get backed up five for the penalty. That's yeah, a moot point now. Still plenty of time left in this game. You have to punt it away. Bonifon. Holy must the punt. And let's see, it's still loose. This could be huge for Virginia. Yeah, Mike, I think that's Virginia's ball. I saw some white jerseys on top of it. Let's get the official call here. Bonifon muff the punt. A lot of white jerseys in the area originally there. And they'll break up the pile, and this could be Cavalier football inside of the 35 of Louisville. Yeah, and Bonifon got a great hop. Just got to secure it. And it is. Really on the field, so the kick was muffed by the receiving team, recovered by the kicking team. First down. And that's the break this Virginia team was looking for. All the momentum was with Louisville. Bonifant, once he gets a perfect hop, exactly what you want as a returner. Right here, just got to secure it. You see what he did there, folks? He was looking up at the gunners coming down and just didn't secure the ball. You clearly see his eyes looking forward. Never secured it. So Virginia gets a huge break, and now Benkert again under duress as he's been all day. And gets this one back to the line of scrimmage. Wow, and the crowd. Well, they're going nuts because they don't think he was outside of the pocket. Right. There's the flag. Correct. If he's in the pocket, there's got to be a receiver in the area, which there was not. Or the ball has to make it. You're right. If you're right, it doesn't matter about the line of scrimmage. He's in the pocket. They're going to talk about this. That's the rule. In Correct. the pocket, ball has to be in the area of a receiver. Correct. Outside of the pocket, you can throw it away. It just has to get back to the line of scrimmage. You are on the money, my friend. So, so they're that's gonna, what they are talking they're about They're going to talk about it. And when we talk about the pocket, it's tackle to tackle. There is no foul for intentional grounding. The quarterback did get outside the tackle box and then returned and threw the pass. Incomplete pass. Check it out. So, listen, guys, here's the tackle box right here. So we got tackle to tackle, okay? Let's run it. Let's see if he gets out of there and gets back in it. That's a good call. He's outside of those lines I drew and he came back in. That is great communication from this ACC officiating crew to come in and let the referee know that. That's an excellent job. Good job by Stuart Mullins. Second down, Ben Kerr. Fires, it's tipped and intercepted. D. Smith picks it off for Louisville. And he's still on the run. What another game turner right there, and this Louisville defense tonight, a 45-yard return on the first interception of the season for D. Smith. Well, how many different guys have we called out for this Louisville defense? D. Smith now stepping up with tackles and the interception right there.
Louisville got the amazing touchdown grab from Jalen Smith. They turned it over, but they get it right back on an interception by D. Smith. And the Cardinals are playing well here today. I'm 17. All hand in here if you're Louisville on this play. Yeah. Jalen Smith, I mean, watch this, like Velcro, right in the corner of the end zone. Goes up and makes the grab. Phenomenal. That was on the last drive for Louisville, and they get it back here after the interception. And it's Day Williams on the carry for two yards. You know, and offense gets all the attention in Lamar Jackson, Heisman Trophy winner, but give credit to Peter Sermon's defense. They are really playing lights out in this game today. A different unit than took the field two weeks ago against Wake Forest. No doubt. It's been the much maligned defense this season when people look at this record and say five and four, and you know, what's the deal? You've got Jackson, you've got all these weapons. As he goes deep, and that one's well overthrown. And you know, you don't always put it, you don't want to put it on just one side, but they have struggled this year on defense. But we'll put it in perspective. They've lost some players. There's been some injuries. They're playing a lot of young players in the secondary. You're reading my mind. 25 players, Mike, for Louisville have played in their first game this year, including 12 true freshmen. So it, it takes a toll. They lost 39 games by projected starters this year due to injury, and it's by 10 different players. Yeah. And there you lose a lot of consistency. Sure do. And experience. Jackson tries to flip it. Jalen Smith, and it's a couple yards, if that. Chris Peace is there for the tackle. Yeah, that's the old shuffle pass. Chris Peace, 13 for Virginia, read that beautifully. Kept Lamar Jackson in his sights, but knew the guy was coming underneath. Once that shuffle pass happened, he disengages and makes that tackle. And now it's time for UVA to step up here. It's fourth down, fourth down and five. And where are they at, Mike? Tweeterland. Tweeterland. That's right. That's your line. They're going to go for it here. Let's see. They were looking to the sideline. They will. Handoff for the first. Williams still on his feet. And out of bounds at the 11. That is Malik Williams. And Louisville keeps the drive going. Watch the mesh point now. The reason why Lamar Jackson holds it in there so long, he's not sure if he wants to pull it or not. Right there, beautiful. He's got his head up. He decides I'm giving it to him because he's reading the defense at the same time. It's the proper read. It's perfectly how you run zone read. We're through three here today from Papa John's Cardinal Stadium in Louisville. And the Cardinals lead it by 17 over the Cavaliers. A win today for Louisville. They're bowl eligible for the eighth consecutive season. 15 minutes on the clock when we come back after this. Start of the fourth quarter here today from Louisville as the Cardinals are inside the red zone. And a gain of six. This first and run by Day Williams. Mike Corey, Randy and Goya with you here today as Louisville really looks to put the hurt on here on this possession. Yeah, I mean, it's been a total three-phase effort today for Louisville. Offense, defense, and special teams playing well. Back to Williams. Track down from behind. Job by Quinn Blanding to save what could have been a touchdown run there by Day Williams. And now you're kind of in no man's land because this is the perfect opportunity. A little zone read, right? With Lamar Jackson, either, either give it to his big back or pull it and keep it. We'll see what they call here. It is third down. Day Williams, he's in. Touchdown, Louisville. Yeah, they say, forget zone read, Bobby Petrino says. We're going to go a little uh, 21 personnel. We'll put a fullback in there, eye formation, a little off tackle right. Give it to our big back, who's now healthy. Power it in. Just so impressed by this guy to be able to come back from that torn ACL in April, six months later. His third game now of the season. 
adds an extra spark. Doesn't look like he had a torn ACL yeah. the way he's been running. I've had that injury, Mike. Mine yeah. was, you know, 19... I'm going to date myself here. 1990, that was a year and a half injury. I was out of football. Wow. Now guys are coming back in six months. We're going to see. Coming right at you. A little downhill. Great blocking. Winning the line of scrimmage. You, I love how the big back... Williams just kind of bends it back to the left a little bit, gets under those pads. And they're having some fun. Mike, can you do 38 push-ups? Because that's how many they just did. I can do 38. Well, that's what I'm yeah. just checking. Yep. That guy was a little skinny. I don't know if he got 38 in. Take a look at our Taco Bell game track here tonight. Now 38 to 14 Louisville, and our record watch continues with Lamar Jackson. He's closing in on so many good ones here. Well, and, and it's it's bad news for Virginia that, that they're getting a running game going too with those backs back because it just opens everything up. You just look at the numbers and it's just it's it's Lamar Jackson. You're just you're accustomed to seeing it week in and week out. Closing in on becoming the only player in FBS to have a 3,000 plus passing yard season, 1,000 yard rushing season for two consecutive years. Yeah, and you see the numbers for Kurt Benkert, 14 for 30. He's been sacked three times but pressured Numerous others forced an interception. I mean, he's kind of been running around back there and give credit to Peter Sermon's defensive unit today Joe Reed and they've kept this guy in check too. very dangerous return man and Across the 30-yard line on that one, but Hasn't been quite the night that he's been looking for he averages over 32 yards a return good for fourth in the country. Out. for an injured player Richard Cardinal. That's Chucky Williams. And senior safety is in on special teams. How about the defense today by Louisville? You just can't say enough of you know what they've been able to do. As you said, Ben Kurt has been running for his life all day today. He sure has, and it's been an entire unit that stepped up up front, getting off the football, and then the defensive backs who who really got it taken to him against Wake Forest. They've all stepped up and they've all made plays. It's been a great team effort on defense by the Louisville Cardinals. That's James Hearns, 99. They're gonna take Williams back to the locker room though, who just got banged up on that last play and evaluate him. Yeah, you don't wanna speculate. They were working on that, that hand finger region, so Hopefully, Chucky Williams will be back out as they take him into the locker room. Ben Kirk's pass out to Zacchaeus, and again, Louisville is just ready for it. One yard on the game, that's it. And they're reading well, things I'm well. I'm telling you, last week, watching the film, or last time out for Louisville, they were not getting off blocks, uh, particularly in the bubble screen game, and they are doing it today. They have leverage. They're not getting beat, they're getting off blocks, and they're making tackles. Coach Sermon said someone needed to step up. Well, guess what? A lot of players are stepping up today for that unit. Mm -hmm. Second down, and UVA just ran a player in late. They called a timeout, they were not set. Timeout, Virginia, their first. We'll be back two minutes into this fourth quarter. Louisville well in command. Coming up Monday night football, week 10 matchup. The Dolphins and the Panthers. Devontae Parker, former Louisville Cardinal, playing for the Dolphins. And Carolina, number one defense in the NFL. Our coverage kicks off with Monday night countdown at 6 p.m. Eastern on ESPN. It is second down and nine here for Virginia. Inching their way closer to the first down marker on this run. It'll be Ellis there, third and short, as you are watching the All-State Saturday kickoff here today from Papa John's Cardinal Stadium. Louisville, Kentucky, Mike Corey, Rini and Golia. Yeah, plenty of time, but down. Do my math real quick, 24? Yeah. You gotta get a little sense of urgency, right? Gotta get going a little bit. I'm with you there. Yeah. <laughs> Taking a little bit too much time, right? Third down and two. Ben Kurt. Oh, it's a long and the ball 
comes loose. It's recovered by Virginia. Jake Feeler, the center, hopped on top of it. And I believe it was Hearns again, 99, with another sack. And I mean, they're just getting all over Kurt Benkert today. That's the fourth sack for Louisville today. Feels like the 14th. Yeah. Well, and, and it, so when they're not getting to him, they're pressuring him. And you know, we talked about that sense of urgency for Virginia. It'd be one thing if they were a quick strike offense. They're just not. Good bounce of a kick, and Bonifon, who muffed the putt previously, and now a flag comes in. He does get on top of this one. I think they're going to get 15. I think they're going to call a late hit. With Bonifant on the ground, we'll see if I am correct. Usually not, just ask my wife. <laughs> After the play was over, personal foul, unnecessary roughness, number 11, kicking team. 15 yard penalty, first down. Your wife's the one that makes you put Alabama at the <laughs> yeah. top of the uh, college football playoff rankings. Oh, even a blind girl. No, you'll see here, Bonifant <laughs> jumps on this one, having some problems back there today, and just, yeah. just can't come in there. It's one thing if the ball's loose, you're going to go in there, but. Bonifant had recovered it at that point, was on the ground, and they're going to protect you. First and ten for the Cardinals now from the 33. High formation set. with the combination of the Williams today running the ball when it hasn't been Lamar Jackson. And that was Malik Williams that time. Yeah, so this is a whole different formation now, Bobby Petrino said. That was 21 personnel, two running backs, a tight end, two wide receivers changing up a little bit. Now switch it back, a little pistol set. And it's back to Day Williams yeah. in the backfield with Jackson. Yep. And they are in no hurry. Yeah. Now, taking the time. And I go from 21 to 10 personnel now. Jackson. Oh, nice reception by Trevion Samuel. Able to corral it into Virginia territory and still in the run. Samuel finally brought down from behind. Brenton Nelson made the tackle. Trevion Samuel, a little smaller receivers, 5'7", 170. Watch the left side of your screen. He's going to cross the formation. He almost Ooh. drops it, but good job by Lamar Jackson to get it to him in stride. And look at him cut back on Micah Kaiser there, the middle linebacker, and he's just quick. You know, those little guys are tough to bring down in space, and that's what you want to do. Get the ball, and Lamar Jackson knows this. Get the ball to your skilled players in space and let them do what Travion Samuel just did right there. 35-yard reception and a lot of yards after the catch. Chris Peace was injured on the last play for Virginia. He got help off the sideline, so he's out. And it's now first down and 10 for the Cardinals. A give to Dan Williams. And he gets down close to the 25-yard line. Well, let's give a congratulations out to Lamar Jackson and his amazing career as a junior now has over 3,000 yards passing this season, 1,000 yards rushing, the only player in FBS history with consecutive seasons with those numbers. And you're not going to include him in the Heisman talk? Right. You're kidding me. I don't care what his team's doing, okay? They're still having a, they have the ability to have a good season, okay? But he won it last year. you got to at least consider the guy. If, if, if this team was, you know, 8-0 or 8-1, he'd be leading the, the top. There he is again, and trying to hold on to the football as he gets close to the first down marker, and he has it. Well, that's the thing. Let's let's say it this way. Saquon Barkley, oh, amazing year he's yeah. having, right? Penn State, what happens just hypothetically if Penn State loses another game or two? Well, and they have, and, and they you have. saw what happened, right? So they knocked him out. He out, you know? Yeah, I mean, and then Baker Mayfield has stepped up again, you know, I, I understand a lot of it is the way the voters look at it is, is being on a dominant team, but his numbers are dominant. And it's an individual award, right, when it's all said and done. Mm -hmm. So got to at least consider the guy. I'm not saying he's going to win it again or should win it again, but he's at least got to be mentioned. And he's just being not being mentioned. Well, we're mentioning it.
delay a delay few game. here. Offense, five yard penalty. First down. And Jackson's also five yards away from passing Deshaun Watson on the ACC's all time list, you know, for, for career yards. Pretty good guy to pass yeah. up, huh? Such a shame about Watson though, yeah. to go down with the year he was having. Sure was. And, uh, yeah, but he's a, you know, a great player, an even better person is Deshaun mm -hmm. Watson, and he'll be back. After the penalty. Now Jackson trying to escape Kaiser, gets a nice block. Jackson goes end zone. And it's overthrown incomplete. The difference is, though, Jackson has at least some time initially yeah. in the pocket to scan and direct, and then yeah. if he has to go out. And he's got the speed. So that was Micah Kaiser, right, that was getting after him. A lot of people might think that's a, a block in the back. You can block a person on the side. The side is legal. You just can't get him in the back, and I think Kaiser was a little shaken up on that. We'll take a look at the end of this here. We'll see who peels back. Let's see. It's a running back. That's a legal block. He's on the side. Malik Williams, 29, and... That's why no flag drop. Second out at 15, a little less communication here, but Lowell's going to get something out of it, and they're going to get a lot more than they thought as Malik Williams gets down close to the 15-yard line. Well, we saw the trick play for Virginia underneath the legs. This time a little pop-up. How about, you know, a little pop-up to Malik Williams. A little problem with the mesh there. That is one thing you can pick on Lamar Jackson in his backs tonight. We've seen that a few times tonight. We have. That's tough. I mean, you want to wait as long as you possibly can. That one was just you yeah. know, a bobble there. But on those zone reads. And, and I'm sure out of all the quarterbacks in the country, Lamar Jackson probably holds it a little longer than <laughs> yeah. someone else, you know, because right. he just waits to that last second in, to make his decision. Now he goes to the sideline, and the route is broken up there, and the pass intended for Seth Dawkins. Bryce Hill, a cornerback, was on coverage for Virginia. Yeah, good job, good fight in that man-to-man -man coverage. That's what you like to see from your defensive backs. Good Field coverage. goal now coming up. Blanton Creaky. It's going to be a 32-yard attempt. And that one is no good. And pushed it off to the right. Virginia down 24 midway through the fourth. The Allstate Saturday kickoff is presented by Allstate, official protector of college football fans, and in part by Dr. Scholes. Happy Veterans Day and this weekend here for our thoughts out to all our veterans, men and women that have served this country over the years. We thank you for your service. Tonight on ESPN, following championship boxing at 12.30 p.m. Eastern. Stick around, Sports Center. Linda Cohn and Stan Verrett. Kirk Herbstreit's on to break down Saturday's showdown, the impact of the college football playoff rankings. We'll size up the Heisman Trophy race as well. And Sixers, Warriors, all that and more coming up tonight. Sports Center after championship boxing, 12.30 p.m. 12.30 a.m. Eastern on ESPN. Virginia and Jordan Ellis on the carry down by 24 points though here and Louisville had that amazing touchdown grab to Smith. They got a ball back on an interception. That's what kind of turned the yeah. tables here in this one. It, it looks good now yeah, if you're I mean, a UVA. Louisville's really had the momentum this entire game other than really that last drive of the first half. Virginia looked mm -hmm. looked good but other than that, Louisville's been in control. Now, if you're Louisville on defense, you just don't want to give up any big plays. Give up the underneath stuff, come up, make tackles. If Virginia's going to score, make them take time and drive the field. Chris Sharp on a carry for the Cavaliers, and he has a first down run. We have seen him too much today. It's a gain of nine. We saw him early. He had the seven-yard touchdown run. We gave him that handoff through the leg. Yeah. That was pretty nifty from Kurt Benkert, and then his first action in quite some time. Injured player down for Louisville. For an injured player. Jair Alexander. 
will step aside with the Cardinals on top 38 14. Allstate is proud to be part of the team that comes together to do good by contributing to participating universities general scholarship funds for each field goal and extra point kicked. Allstate has contributed millions in scholarship funds. We're at Papa John's Cardinal Stadium today for Louisville and Virginia. Mike Corey and former UMass All-American and NFL running back Rainey Ingolia. And Virginia's got to hustle it up here yeah. a little bit, like you said, midway through the fourth. Uh, a lot of ground to make up. But Kurt Benkert, one of their stars in history at quarterback, who's got some amazing numbers, needs to get going, and he gets this to Lavroni on the catch as we head you back to the studio for an update. Mike Rainey, the number one team in the country, is in big trouble on the road at Auburn. Jared Stidham's having himself a heck of a game here fighting Ryan Davis. This is a great pitching catch by Davis. Auburn's extended their lead to 23 early fourth. All right, Chris, thanks very much. And another injury down here on the field. It's Andre Lavroni after making the catch. So you're seeing what Auburn's doing to Jordan, if they can hold on. Right. You've worked with me a long time. I've always said it. I believe there's a time when a two-loss team makes the playoff. Now, I'm not saying Auburn's going to do it. They're sitting there with two losses, but they have the schedule in front of them to do it. Right. They beat Georgia tonight. They're going to get a shot at Alabama, who if they keep winning, right, they'll be number one. Then they'll get a shot at Georgia again uh, in the uh, SEC championship. You win those three games at the end of the season, three top ten wins, how do you not get put in the playoff? Right. I don't disagree with you. Yeah. The way things are going this year. It's a crazy year. Upsets, yeah. yeah. I mean, two weeks ago, number two, number four went down. Yep. I mean, there's only so many times. It's why we love right. college football. Yeah. Ben Kirk. And not looking for it that time was Lamont Atkins coming out of the backfield. All right, how about your top six then? What do you have? It's similar to college football playoff committee. I still have Alabama one, Georgia two, Notre Dame three, Clemson four, Oklahoma five, Miami six. But this is going to clean itself up, right? Georgia's playing Auburn. We know what's happening there. Miami and Notre Dame tonight. That's a big one. Oklahoma's playing TCU, who, oh, by the way, would be probably seven for me right outside. So this is great. They're all going to play each other. And that's what we love. We just had an unsportsmanlike conduct penalty on Louisville. So Virginia gets the ball now down to the 42-yard line with first and 10. Some taunting after the play. It's a two-yard pickup from the catch by Dubois. You're going to see the back get hit. You, just, you can't talk. He's standing over him. Pointing, you just you can't do that, Alexander. You can't do that. Good job by the official to come in. Just play football, you know. Just no need to do that. Especially being up 48-14. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yep. You guys are playing great. No need to do that. Now Virginia is changing up the backfield, getting some of their true freshman running backs in. PK Kyer, and he gets the call. And Kyer's close to a first down. Let's go back to Chris in the studio. Please be one. Oh, to your point, Reed. Yeah. Oh, and that's. Hey, imagine if Florida State wins that. Florida State's got athletes. All right, let's not forget that. Again, Kyer, and he has a first down run for Virginia. Now, you want to throw a monkey wrench in everything? Let Florida State pull off that upset today. Right. We got the big one coming up tonight, though. Notre Dame and Miami. Game day there this morning for the first time in over 10 years. 8 p.m. Eastern on ABC. <laughs> Kyer met after a gain of just one. Oh, by the way, we haven't mentioned it either. You're talking about Miami playing Notre Dame tonight. Louisville holds on to this game, looks, which it looks like they're gonna. Miami clinches the Coastal Division in the ACC. Correct. They'll be in the ACC championship game, and Clemson needs to get a win. Yeah, to clinch the to Atlantic. Go to theirs, yeah, and they'll be in for the third straight year. But they're in for a battle. So, so if Clemson holds on versus Florida State, and Louisville ends up holding on here, it's Miami and Clemson. Yeah, you have your ACC matchup already for the championship. Oh, my God. 
Cavaliers keep it on the ground again for Kyer as we take a look at the ACC standings here to tell you what we're talking about. Well, there's Clemson on the Atlantic side and Miami on the coastal. Yeah, and you know, regardless of what happens today, Virginia at three and two, six and three overall. Listen, picked last to finish last in the coastal. They've really played well for Bronco Mendenhall. Again, these kids have never been to a bowl game. They're bowl eligible with still a couple games to go. Yeah, and you think about Louisville, I mean, yeah, that's just such a surprise. Yeah. I mean, you see them at the bottom of the list there. But they got a couple winnable games after this, so they can really put a nice run together to end their season and get to a nice bowl game. we got Syracuse at home next week and then at Kentucky. Third down for Virginia, Ben Kirk. And on a sliding catch is Olamide Zacchaeus. That's going to set up first and 10 from the 11-yard line. Man. Nice play. I mean, Zacchaeus is one of their prime players, and we just haven't called his name out uh, as much as they needed it to today. You kind of see the ball touch the ground. The ball can touch the ground as long as the ground does not help you control it. He's been tracking down Heath Miller, the great tight end in the record books for Virginia. And his first name is Nigerian for the blessing has come. Alamade Zacchaeus, number four for the Cavaliers. Play fake. As Benkert finds Zacchaeus and is down to the three yard line. It's a gain of eight. A good underneath throw by Benkert to Zacchaeus. Unfortunately, a little too little too late. Yep. Time uh, approaching the two minute mark here as they are at the three yard line. But I love that they're playing hard. That's that's a testament to Bronco Mendenhall and his effort and what he wants to do. And listen, he's kind of building this program up from scratch in his second year. Uh, he's a different coach. He's got different philosophies, but I really like him. Hard nose, old school guy. It's Ellis, and Ellis is in for the touchdown. Jordan Ellis scores for the Cavaliers. And that's the way to finish off the drive. Get it in there for six. Good hard run by Jordan Ellis. And again, no quit in Virginia. I was going to say, there was no letdown today effort-wise. Yeah. Not showing up on the scoreboard for them, but you come from behind, you beat Georgia Tech, you're bowl eligible. They fought here today. No, and you bring up a good point. I, I don't think they were flat today coming no. off that upset win to get bowl eligible. I just think Louisville showed up and played the way we're accustomed to seeing good Louisville teams play. It's a 17-point game now, 38-21 Cardinals. Four of the top five teams right there as college basketball season is underway. See those hops on the baseline? Yeah. It's like you playing right. a little b-ball. That's right. Minute 48 to go as Louisville leads Virginia 38-21 on side kick time here for the Cavaliers. And now they'll go deep. And it'll be recovered at the 10-yard line. Let's head back to Chris Connor in the studio. Chris. All right, Florida State making a game of this against Clemson. Kelly Bryant is going to fumble the football here and Ryan Burns recovers for Florida State, so they had the ball in Clemson territory, down three, but then Blackman just going to give it right back up. Very next play, picked by Van Smith. He's going to bring this one right back into Florida State territory. Clemson has just punched it in. They lead 23-14 uh, to 14 right now, pending the extra point. Here's ETN finishing off that drive, guys. Well, they put up a good fight. Well, and that's the problem. Blackman just inexperienced too many turnovers this season for Florida State. This run game today for Louisville really got the job done. It's Dave Williams there. They're up to almost 270 yards rushing as Jawan Pass is now in the ball game. The redshirt freshman quarterback out of Columbus, Georgia. You know, it's tough. It's a cool night tonight. It's a little nippy, and it's like, hey, for a minute and 48, uh, Juwan, get in there and hand the ball off a couple times. Lamar's done. <laughs> he is done for the night. Louisville's going to go to 6-4, and four, and they're going to be bowl eligible for the eighth straight year. They avoided their first two-game losing streaks. It's the first two games of 2015, or 
back to back I should say as they lost to NC State and Boston College in a row so a good job by you know Louisville here and they're going to be in the postseason once again I know it's not the kind of year that they wanted but it's a complete game by them here today coming up at 8 p.m. Eastern 5 Pacific on ABC we have it for you it's Notre Dame and Miami first time since 1989 both teams in the top 10 Irish have won seven straight by double digits Miami's won 13 straight longest in the nation can't wait to see this one yeah you know I think Miami's gonna be hyped ready to go but I'm an old school guy Mike you know me Notre Dame's got a great offensive line they win at the line of scrimmage they got a great running back I think they pounded at Miami I think they hold on and get the win tonight on the road and the Lamar Jackson show will continue for the Cardinals they've got two more games versus Syracuse next week at Kentucky what a job first in FBS history with back to back seasons of 3000 plus passing yards 1000 yards rushing there's over 100 yards rushing again today and they get it done 38 21 the final score and Louisville is going to go to six and four and the Cavaliers drop to six and four here a complete effort by Louisville Bobby Petrino has got to be happy with all three phases of his team today. Final from Papa John's Cardinal Stadium in Louisville. Cardinals 38, Cavaliers 21. Thanks for watching. For Rudy and Goey and Mike Corey, so long. Enjoy the rest of the games and this weekend. That's all for us. ESPN Goal Line is next. Let's send you to the studio.